Hey all you diehard Shape Key fans, welcome back to this video learning series working with Shape Keys in Blender Part 3. This particular video we're going to go over gotchas, little tidbits of information that might have you scratching your head saying, hmm? The first gotcha we've got is in version 2.70 and up, at least as far as we're concerned right now, what happened to the rename value? There's no value here. This is the value of the shape key. Got to double click now. New name. Enter. And in case you weren't really that familiar with it, here's 269. Look at that. We got the name value. You can double click all you want up here. You'll get nada. Nada. All right. That's it for that particular one. That wasn't too hard. Okay, uh, this next one might have you scratching your head just a little bit. Uh, if you're in here in edit mode and you forget you're in edit mode, which I do pretty regularly, and you come over here and you try to add shape keys or remove shape, nothing. Look at that, nothing. You, whoops, what's wrong? Oh, got to go back into object mode. We all knew that, right? Now we can add, delete. Anyway, if you find yourself not able to add, these are all grayed out. First thing to do, check to see if you're in object mode or edit mode. All right, this next one had me scratching my head a little bit when I first ran into it. It's the enable in edit mode button. Let's go ahead and set this up real quick. I'm going to add a little bit of shape to this particular key. And just move this vertice out here, tab out. We can see that we've got some modification there. All right. Now, what happens if you want to see what that looks like while you're in edit mode? Well, all you see is the full-on position. But this little toggle right here, you click this, and now you can actually manipulate the value of this shape key. Now, here's where the problem starts. If you're at value 0.00, .00 and in other words, your shape is at basis, and you try to manipulate, I'm going to go ahead and grab this same vertice, and, and I can't do anything. Try to rotate it, can't do anything. Grab multiple vertices, can't do anything. Okay, the problem is we're on the basis time key. So if we come off of that just a little bit, you don't have to do much, you just have to be off of zero. Now I can grab, now I can manipulate. So if you find yourself unable to edit your, your shape while you're in edit mode, see if you're on value zero and the edit enable button is checked. If so, Turn off the Edit Enable button. Okay, let's reset this back here. Okay, this next item pertains to those of you that will probably be exporting your shape keys for use in Unity. And uh, for this, I'm going to set it up with uh, three keys. Name with dots. Name with underscores. And title case name. All right, and if we export that out into an FBX, that looks good, export it out, and then we go and bring this into Unity, and we look at the skin mesh renderer, we will see that we've got dots, name with under, and title case name. So the names on these second two shape keys came in fine. The first one truncated after the last dot. And if we look at the actual FBX file in a text editor, we notice that Blender is actually exporting the full name. So this appears to just be an interpretation that Unity makes of the FBX file. So, dots, probably not a good naming convention. It doesn't appear to affect the actual shape keys, but uh, it will create some issues with your names. And this one's just a, just a simple one, but I think I mentioned it in the first video. This applies kind of to Unity users as well. If we're muting any of these keys, they still are exported out in an FBX, and we'll check that out real quick here. And we'll bump this up. We'll bring it into Unity. Check our skin mesh renderer, and we still have them, even though these second two here were muted or turned off. So they're still exported, but it does turn them off in Blender. Okay, through the miracle of film, I've already taken the liberty of setting up this next scene. 
I've got a shape key on this mesh, and I've also got a mirror modifier. The reason I've done this is because we're going to demonstrate the incompatibilities of mesh modifiers with shape keys. And there are really two main gotchas that you've got to be concerned with here. The first is mesh modifiers cannot be applied when shape keys exist. And this doesn't matter whether you started the mesh modifier before you started the shape key or you added the mesh modifier after you started adding shape keys. And the second gotcha is when you export these meshes with shape keys and modifiers, if you apply the modifier, which you would need to do if you want to see the modified results, the resultant FBX file will strip the shape keys out. And we'll demonstrate all of this. Okay, first off, let's show that we do have a shape key assigned here. And I've called it mouse cat thing just because the resultant shape kind of looks like the cross between a mouse cat and a thing. So we can see that we've got a shape. We'll go into edit mode and we see that we have the mirror modifier applied. And I can turn that off so we can see that we've just got half of our cube. So the first thing we're going to do is show what happens when we try to apply a mirror modifier on a mesh with shapes. You may or may not know, but you have to be in object mode to apply a mirror modifier. So we'll go back out into object mode and we will just try to apply the modifier. And we get this error that says modifier cannot be applied to a mesh with shape keys. Now I have tested this with the majority of these modifiers in Blender. We can add a solidify, apply, we get the same error. We can add a simple deform. This one's got a twist on it and we get the same error. I have attempted this with uh, pretty much all of the modifiers in these middle two columns here and the same results, whether it's actually adding or removing mesh data or if it's just modifying the position of mesh data. Okay, now we're going to demonstrate what happens when we try to export these modified meshes out and maybe import them into something like Unity. So uh, first off, let's go ahead and export this file to, and we're going to apply modifiers in this one. And then let's go ahead and export it again. And this time we're going to not apply modifiers. And we'll increase the version level there, export. So we have two FBXs that we have exported and we'll import both of those into Unity. So we've got the first one and the second one. And as we would expect, the second one is only half of the box. And the first one is the full box. That's the one that had the modifier applied, the mirror modifier. Now, if we look at this particular model, we're looking for a skinned mesh renderer and we don't have one. All we have is a mesh renderer and there are no shape keys. If we look at the second model, we see that we have the skinned mesh renderer and we have our shape key. Now, if we examine the FBX file, we can see that, and this is the one where we apply the mesh modifier, there is no mouse cat thing. And we look at the second file, which did not apply the mesh modifier. Our shape key is intact. So you might be asking yourself what you can do if you come into this situation. And the simple answer is not a whole lot. Blender is pretty strict on how it handles mesh modifiers with shape keys. It doesn't allow you to apply them and it strips out your shape keys when you do an export. So to sum this particular gotcha up, in your workflow, you should probably apply all of your modifiers before you start creating your shape keys. If you don't, then you're going to have a problem if you need to apply those modifiers or if you need to export your meshes for use in another application. If all you're doing is working completely within Blender, then you probably won't have a problem if you don't need to apply those modifiers. Again, if you need to apply your modifiers, you'll have to remove your shape keys first. Okay, that about sums up this gotchas video. Thanks for watching.